what would you say the best sound design you've ever come across in a game is? Um, same answer that um, mm-hmm. probably everyone <laughs> would give, which is that a lot of sound designers really uh, respect and, uh, and admire the work of Martin Stig Anderson in uh, Limbo and uh, Inside that he did at Play Dead. It's just, I think, I think the reason it's held in such high regard is, yeah, it's, you know, it's got really high sort of production value in the sense that everything just sounds really nice, but in addition to that, the sound is also a really important part of the player experience. Like if you if you turn those sounds off, just just shit. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like the the sound is so central to the way you kind of feel that experience. Sound design, easily one of the most underappreciated components of video games. So much emphasis is put on graphics and visuals in gaming, but seldom do we stop and appreciate how important sound is in making our favourite games feel alive. Sound is such an integral part of so many of the games I played growing up, but in the last few years I can't help but feel that sound is really starting to become a more recognised part of player experiences, whether it's through music and soundtrack, the individual sounds we hear and the way that they're mixed together, or simply the noises that make entire worlds feel like they're breathing in and out alongside us. Kenny Young is a freelance sound designer from Scotland. Most recently, Kenny created the soundtrack for Astro's Playroom, a game that, if you're lucky enough to have gotten your hands on a PS5, will be pre-installed on your console. Previously, Kenny worked at Sony's London studio, and at Media Molecule, where he served as the lead sound designer for the Little Big Planet games, one of my favourite franchises from my teenage years. Essentially, there's no better person in the world right now to ask about the wonderful world of sound design. It's clearly, you know, it's one of those things where the sound on its own is it's kind of useless. Um, it's certainly the experiences aren't made to be played as audio-only experiences. There's obviously audio-only games, which are some of which are aimed specifically at visually impaired people. But, um, like, yeah, that's just not how we generally think about our audio experiences. Whereas the visual side of it would still work without the audio. It just doesn't work as well. And then as soon as you add the audio, it's kind of a greater than the sum of its parts type thing where audio is on its own. It's hard to say if it's like what percentage of the experience is audio and it's hard to say what percentage of the experience is, um, is visual. But when you add them together, you somehow get more than 100%. It kind of just like adds up to be this really cool experience. Uh, and although I'm not allowed to talk, allowed to talk about um, Ash's Playroom at the moment, I think um, it is worth mentioning that uh, I think the dual sense on PS5, the, the new controller, with its you know haptics and uh, all that extra feedback, that really does add this like other kind of feedback to the player, which we haven't really had yet. Rumble added a bit of something, but it always felt a bit of a gimmick. Whereas this is some there's some weird synesthesia thing going on there, where it's like on its own, it's like just it's cool, but with the sound, particularly sound coming out of the controller and the visuals all together, it just creates this amazing new experience. Uh, and I feel like that's quite a good, well, most people watching this probably want to play the PlayStation 5, so it's kind of meaningless, but um, once people experience that, I feel like that's quite a good analogy for what sound adds to an experience. It's just sort of adding this whole other thing, which really makes every, every other aspect of the experience just sort of more pleasurable or engaging in some way. But if sound is such a big part of the gaming experience, why do we all take it for granted so much? Until a few years ago, I never separated how important sound could be from level design, clean gameplay mechanics, or whatever else. Well, Kenny says that it could even be due to our earliest of childhood experiences. People get into sound in different ways, and it always is completely random, because like I said, it's not part of our culture. Like, you know, when I'm a parent now, so so really thinking about this a lot when we, when we had kids, which is that, um, you know, you in the way that, you know, you, you put a, give your kids crayons and stuff when they're quite young, encourage them to draw and sort of try and learn how to express themselves visually on the page. And then the musical side of things, you know, we listen to a lot of music and you, you sing and you dance. Um, but there's not really any equivalent for sound. The closest you get is probably you know, we put obviously a lot of uh, emphasis on our language skills and speech is sort of 
it's not sound it's this weird language is like encoded in sounds and gets transmitted through sound and then unencoded in your head so it's it's not really sound per se but that's the closest thing that we've got culturally to thinking about sound but we just don't teach our kids to just listen to stuff that isn't music it's just not part of the conversation at all so anyone who ends up taking an interest in sound is a freak <laughs> to a certain extent <laughs> because it's just like i don't know how i can't think with me even how it happened i think it was yeah i, I don't i don't even know but i think sound is getting a bit more of an emphasis now and sony you're talking all about doing 3d audio and everything with a yeah. lot more games are you quite optimistic that sound's going to be a bit more of a, a recognized part of things uh, I mean, from my perspective, whether it's recognised or not, from like a consumer perspective, I don't like that's nice, but um, like I don't. No one gets into sound to <laughs> for like the rock and roll fame <laughs> aspect of it. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's just because of your love of the craft and love of the the medium and stuff like that, um, and combined with your love of sound, I suppose. But um, what is really important and what is encouraging and exciting is that, yeah, and on the game development side of things, I think if the people I'm working with are thinking more about sound, yeah, that just creates more opportunities for us to do interesting things with sound. And ultimately, that's why I do what I do. Uh, I've specialised in sound. I want to do interesting things with it. So if you're working with people who are like, um, instead of just not having any conversation about sound and you having to work and getting tired, always trying to push things, if they're coming to you and saying, you know, the work, it's always better people come to you and say, what can we do? Rather than they come to you and say, here's what you need to do. Because then <laughs> um, it's just, it's not, as, it's not as fun when someone uh, tells you what to do, basically. Especially if you don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. There's a whole conversation to be had about what what is sound design and um, because for most people sound design is basically a synonym for sound effects editing where it's like sounds designing sounds yeah. whereas uh, for me sound design uh, i think about more in terms of like the conceptual side of things it's uh, designing for sound uh, thinking about how sound can be used and of course the reality is it's, it's all these things um but yeah the conversation often skews towards this sort of content creation and sound manipulation side of things which really whilst it's cool and is you know essential skill to have as a sound designer none of that's useful unless you've got the thinking about how to use sound bit because it's that that is the most important thing for players and for making the experience work and thinking about how you're going to use sound then once you've got an interesting idea there it's about okay how do you execute that and that's where the the sound editing and the sound manipulation all comes in so for me those are like the emphasis is kind of topsy-turvy and back to front in the way a lot of people think about sound. They're kind of, they're doing it wrong, <laughs> <laughs> basically. Um, but I think that's actually a really common mistake uh, that a lot of newcomers make uh, because there's so much focus on sound effects editing and stuff. Um, they focus on that at the beginning of their careers and it takes them a long time to realise that that's just one aspect of it. And then eventually they realise that in order to do good work, they need to be thinking about more about collaboration. They'd be thinking more about, oh, how do I do interesting things with sound? Because that's the stuff that people actually care about. And that's also what my colleagues care about. That's why they're hiring me. They want to help make this amazing experience. It's not just about making like the best gunshots or yeah. the sexiest car engine. It's like, yeah, there's a whole other side to it. Um, and it's interesting that, again, I think that just goes back to sound being this difficult to talk about non-cultural experience which we don't think about and so unless you are really lucky and get exposed to those ideas early in your career it probably takes people a while to eventually cotton on to those things uh, yeah thank you so much for watching to listen to the full interview with kenny in podcast form please take a look at the links in the description Kenny was so generous to give up an hour of his time to talk with me, and he had so many more interesting tidbits and stories from his career that you definitely don't want to miss. Thank you so, so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more, and head to gamedevweekly.co.uk. Stay safe, and bye for now.